In this video, we are going to look at workspaces within vCenter Lab Manager. In an organization, an administrator can create workspaces and assign some or all of the organization resources to each workspace. A workspace can have dedicated resources or share resources with other workspaces. An organization can be assigned certain resources and those same resources can then be sub-assigned to one or more workspaces. A workspace consists of one or more configurations, users, groups and resource pools that belong to that workspace. Administrators with rights at the workspace level can create, delete, edit and add a virtual machine as well as being able to deploy or undeploy fenced and unfenced virtual machines. Every organization includes a main workspace. System administrators and administrators with rights at the organization level can create additional workspaces. For example, you can create integration, testing, staging and production workspaces to manage service transition activities. When you create a workspace, you can choose whether you want to share its configurations or keep them private. In a shared workspace, by default, all the users in that workspace can access the configurations. In a private workspace, by default, users can only access their own configurations. When we look at the diagram which is currently presented, we can see a simple illustration of how organizations and workspaces fit together. Each organization can have a subset of workspaces. Each workspace can have its own dedicated resources or can share resources with the other workspaces within the organization. However, a workspace can only use the resources which has been presented to it via the parent organization. This means that a workspace in the support organization cannot use the resources which have been presented to the dev organization. Likewise, a workspace within the dev organization will not be able to access the resources being presented to the support organization. Let us look at the process for creating a new workspace. In the organization drop down menu, select the organization in which you want to create a workspace. In this example, I will select the sales organization. In the left pane, click workspaces. Click new workspace. Type a name. In this example, I will call it regional. If desired, you can type a description. At this point, you can choose to populate the workspace with the desired resources and users, or you can do this at a later stage. All that is actually needed in order for the workspace to be created is the name. The resources and users can be specified at a later stage if desired. When you click OK, Lab Manager will create the workspace. All organizations have a primary workspace. When you add users and groups to the organization, Lab Manager automatically adds the users and groups to the primary workspace. You can manually add them to other workspaces. When you add a resource pool to an organization, Lab Manager automatically adds the resource pool and its associated resources to the primary workspace. You can manually add the resource pool to other workspaces. Initially, the primary workspace in each organization is called main, but you can select a different primary workspace. Each organization can have either one primary workspace or no primary workspace. You can delete the primary workspace if you do not want the Lab Manager to automatically add users, groups and resource pools to a workspace in the organization. By default, only system administrators can enable or disable workspaces. When you disable a workspace, all of its users become stranded. Only system administrators and administrators with rights at the organization level can delete a workspace. Before you can delete a workspace, you must disable it and reassign the objects owned by any stranded users. See the chapter entitled Managing Stranded Users on page 111 of the Lab Manager Users Guide at the following URL for further instructions. To delete the primary workspace, in the left pane, select an organization. In this example, I will select the QA organization. Select Workspaces. Move the pointer over the primary workspace, which is called Main, and select Disable. Once disabled, the workspace can now be deleted. 
Move the pointer over the primary workspace and select delete. Lab Manager deletes the primary workspace and sets the primary workspace for the organization to none. You can select an existing workspace to be the new primary workspace, otherwise the next workspace that you create is set as the new primary workspace. In the Organization Properties page you can select the workspace to be the primary workspace. In the left pane select Organizations. In this example I will select the QA organization. Move the pointer over the organization name and select Properties. In the Primary Workspace drop-down menu, select a workspace. In this example, I will select the workspace named Quality Assurance. Lab Manager sets this workspace as the primary workspace. When you add users, groups and resource pools to this organization, they are added to the primary workspace. If you select none, the organization has no primary workspace, so you must add users, groups and resource pools to each workspace. As you can see, Quality Assurance is now marked as the primary workspace, identified by the bold black writing. This concludes our look at workspaces within Lab Manager. Further information can be found in the Lab Manager User's Guide at the following URL. To view additional videos in this tutorial series, please check KB1020915 in our public knowledge base.